My memory is that the Myth Makers from season three of the original Doctor Who run during the William Hartnell epoch was not the strongest, and this is partly due to it being a... You know, this entire serial is missing. All four episodes. So we're viewing reconstructions. Though, looking at it again, I'm quite... Well, one of the reasons I remember this not being the greatest serial is because, firstly, the, why do you even bother calling this a historical serial? It's set during the Trojan War, and the Doctor interacts with Achilles, Agamemnon, and Odysseus, Menelaus. Yeah, I mean, it, this isn't... History wasn't dictated by Heinrich Schliemann. This is... This never happened, let's be honest. Like, it, it just seems a bit... This show's meant to be educational. Telling kids that this stuff happened is just... It just kind of... At least irritates me. It just... It's a... It's a nitpick. Let's say. But... I'm watching it. This reconstruction... And this reconstruction actually is fairly effective now that I'm looking at it because there has... There clearly was a lot of photographs available of the production that they were able to... You know, I'm surprised at how many photos did exist of this... Of this production because they were able to make the reconstruction quite quite soundly and of course it's it's look the doctor pretending to be zeus to you know warm himself up to achilles after achilles has just killed hector and achilles introducing quote zeus unquote to odysseus who is too witty to to believe it to be convinced and then agamemnon and menelaus argue, arguing it's it's just fun it's stupid but it's fun, and like the reconstruction, they had enough resources available where the photographic reconstruction is actually one of the better ones I've seen so far of, of these, say, 2000s DVD era, uh, the re releases of the reconstructions. I know the animated ones have come out since then, they're much better, I've, I've talked about that, I've acknowledged that earlier. Still, it's, you know, I, I, who knows, maybe my feelings on this serial will decrease over the next three episodes, but this part one has been the reconstruction of, was in quite fun. Now let's read out about the conception and writing of this particular serial. After assuming the position of story editor in April 1965, Donald Tosh wanted to take Doctor Who in new directions, such as experimenting with humour and horror in historical episodes. Tosh was soon joined by new producer John Wiles, and they immediately developed a positive working relationship, wanting the show to move away from childish science fantasy and towards more historical stories and adult science fiction, the latter inspired by authors Ray Bradbury and Isaac Asimov. As the first three stories of his tenure, The Time Meddler Galaxy 4 and Mission to the Unknown, had been commissioned by his predecessor Dennis Spooner, The Myth Makers was the first serial for which Tosh assumed full control. He contacted Donald Cotton, whom he had known since the latter was a student at Guildhall School of Music and Drama, and invited him to submit a story idea for Doctor Who. Cotton was initially hesitant at his, as it was an unusual field for him, but agreed if he could select the subject matter, The Trojan Horse, some of the crew, which included his colleagues from BBC Third Programme, to which Tosh and Wiles were satisfied. Cotton had written several pieces about Greek mythology for Third Programme, prompting a similar subject matter for Doctor Who. Tosh remained wary of Cotton's ability as he knew of the writer's inexperience of television drama. Prior to his script commission, Tosh requested a storyline in late April 1965. Cotton used several resources to research historical facts, including the Cambridge Ancient History, History of Greece to 322 BC by N. G. L. Hammond, The Origins of Greek Civilization by Chester Starr, and A Companion to Greek Studies by Leonard Wibley. He noted several inconsistencies between the texts and that several of the Greek names in them, and in Homer's Iliad, were corrupted ver variations of their true Greek form. Cotton wrote that the Trojan horse was almost certainly completely myth, but found it compelling to include within the script of the Doctor's involvement. All this was work. Cotton officially commissioned the first two episodes of the serial, then titled Doctor Who and the Myth Makers, on the 13th of May, with a target delivery date of 4th of June. The last two episodes are commissioned on the 11th of June, with the serial now titled The Myth Makers. Wiles was excited for the story to be both intellectual and humorous, describing it as high comedy. Documentation in mid-July listed the serial as Doctor Who and the Trojans. Excuse me. The episode titles changed over time, especially as the BBC vetoed Cotton's use of puns in the title. The first episode was originally Deus Ex Machina, and the fourth one was called Is There a Doctor or Is There a Doctor in the Horse? For Wiles apparently demanded it be changed. Cotton recalled that the third episode title, Death of a Spy, was forced on him after the script had been written, requiring him to introduce the character Cyclops, though some evidence contradicts this statement. The second episode is called Small Profit Quick Return. I know that much. Fun. 
Derek Martinez, who directed the two previous serials, Galaxy 4 and Mission to the Unknown, was discussed as a possible director of The Myth Makers in June 1965, for the role was ultimately signed to BBC staff director Michael Leaston Smith. It was his only work for the show, though. Wiles later wrote to him in hopes that they would collaborate again. Designer John Wood visited the British Museum to research Trojan architecture and discovered that their building style had been basic, generally carved from large stone pieces. Costume supervisor Daphne Dare was deputised by Tony Pierce for the first episode, while regular makeup designer Sonia Markham was unavailable for the first two episodes, replaced by Elizabeth Blattner, who had supervised the show's first two serials. Cotton brought composer Humphrey Searle from Third Program to write music for the serial. He conducted a group of eight musicians from the Symphonia of London, who had previously produced music for Cotton's Greek trilogy on Third Program, to provide about 14 minutes of music cues, significantly consisting of guitar and horns. I think that will do here for now. Tune in next time to learn about part two of The Mythmakers here on AOD's Classic Doctor Who Retrospective if you're so inclined.